Hello and welcome back to New Plays Def Jam Fight for New York. Uh, before we get back to fighting for New York, I want to stop by Stapleton here and see if we can uh, disperse some of our uh, our statistics a little bit, just to just to give us a bit more of an advantage in some of these fights. Um, let's see, yeah, train skills. I just want to uh, pump up. I don't know. Let's say our uh, the health a little bit. And our speed, which honestly our speed's lacking, considering our, our fighting style should definitely be higher. Okay, that's probably good. All right, so let's um, let's go ahead and wrap up the Babylon here. Probably should have done this last week, but uh, we're gonna take care of it now. Yeah. So last week, what happened was there was uh, there's a stretch of the game where you kind of get sucked in to a string of fights, and I just. Uh, was worried about getting uh, pulled into that, but I had forgotten about a few extra fights we've got before that. So we could have fought Scarface last week and it would have been fine. Um, and in hindsight, we should have. But but whatever, it turned out, uh, I think it'll probably be okay. Because what we've got before that stretch, I think it'll break up all right. Our episode-wise, we'll see. I'm having a hard time deciding exactly when to stop some of these episodes, as you may have noticed. Um, anyway, Scarface here. I'm not actually that familiar uh, with Scarface's work. I mostly know him as a member of uh, the Ghetto Boys, um, which is a group I, I like. Um, like uh, like most white guys like myself, I found out about them through Office Space, because uh, they do two songs in that uh, film, uh, Damn It Feels Good to Be a Gangsta, and Still, um, the two big hip-hop numbers in that in that uh, film. And I uh, I really liked them in, in that, and I, so I looked up more of their stuff later. Um, I'm not an expert on the Ghetto Boys by any stretch, but I've generally liked everything I've heard of them. I, uh, they're one of the more socially conscious uh, rap groups that I've listened to. Though the, the, I don't know, that may not be completely fair. There's a lot of uh, rap groups that rap about things that are uh, really important. Um, but, yeah, and I, I don't really know the Ghetto Boys solo careers all that well, though. Like, uh, I know, um, like, I, I mostly just know Scarface because he's in this game. And then the, the other members are, I think, uh, Bushwick Bill, uh, and is it Willie D? I'm not, I'm not positive. I might be putting my foot in my mouth there, uh, with trying to name off people here, but, um, yeah, I, the other two aren't, aren't dead in this, though. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> we, I've been kind of fighting on autopilot here, because I got talking about the Ghetto Boys a little bit, but, um, he's, he's got his blaze here, but I think if we can just stall a little bit we should be fine we're pretty close to our own blaze yeah there his is done and now we've got ours so hopefully they can hit him with this and that'll turn things in our favor he he got a bit more of an advantage on us than i would have liked but uh yeah here's our blaze bam okay so yeah that'll help a lot um we uh still need to wear him down a bit but which i'm trying to do but the main thing with scarface here that i've noticed and i don't remember this but he's been countering us a lot um, which happens in general the further you get in this game like because we get a lot stronger throughout the game but the fighters don't um, the way they kind of artifice some difficulty uh, increase is to um, have them counter more and block more uh, and they get a little bit smarter in terms of running away from us when we're blazing uh, the earlier fighters I don't think did that quite as much uh, it doesn't, it, like, other than being a little bit annoying, though, it doesn't really make the game that much harder, as you may have noticed. We've been winning the vast majority of our fights, and while I do tend to cut out a lot of the times when I lose, um, it just doesn't happen that often. Um, there's only been a handful of times I've had to do that this whole series, uh, and that's, we're, like, we're playing on normal difficulty, so, oh, crap. Um, I messed up there. I got too close to the wall of, the wall of flush there and got pushed off, so our weapon did not get used appropriately. It actually got used on us. And now that, now that I don't want to pick it up again, I can't. Okay, there we go. It, sometimes it seems like the only times we can pick up weapons off the ground is when it's inconvenient. So yeah, I'd, I was hoping we could knock him out with that, but because we got pushed, it didn't work out that way. I'm trying to hit him with this bottle. Um, if we could have hit him with it at the right time, uh, just three shots in a row, we might would have been able to at least get him in the red, but oh well. Um, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> it's not been working out well for us here. Uh, but we're, we're doing alright. I want to get this broom. Hold on. Now that we've got him down. Okay, this, actually, we should be able to finish it off with this, I think. Like, as long as he just keeps blocking. Um, there we go. Oh, he just barely, okay, there we go. So, just, 
We actually had our pick there between the broom, the wall, and a blaze to finish him off, but the broom was obviously the the quickest and easiest way. Um, so let's see, that should wrap up the last of the, these clubs, and then we just got a few extra special fights left to go. Um, we unlocked Scarface and uh, the Fix uh, with his blazing move. I don't know. I don't know if that's a reference to uh, something in his career or not, but I would I would assume so. That seems to be the the pattern with these. Okay, here we go. Things should really start uh, to pick up now. Oh yeah, it's just Crow right off, right off the bat. Just a few more wins and we could. Don't blow it now, homie. Okay, we should be having some more um, serious competition now, uh, at least in terms of name recognition, if nothing else. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's hold on. We got Ludacris at the Seventh Heaven, and Flava Flav at the Terra Dome. I don't know. Let's go ahead and fight Flava here. And Flava Flav is a character that I had forgotten was in this game. Uh, about halfway through playing it, it just I just suddenly remembered. Oh yeah, Flava Flav's in this, isn't he? Um, and I uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just think he's a really funny addition. It fits that he's in the Terra Dome. We had when we had been talking about the themes of what fighters go in what uh, clubs and what areas. I had hypothesized that the, the Terror Dome was more like where they would put more like the old school kind of goofier side of hip hop. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what Flavor Flav is if you can't tell just by looking at him and listening to him. And I don't know, do um do the kids today know Flavor Flav? I don't, I don't know how relevant he is like in pop culture like it seems like he was um hard to uh, hard to miss uh when i was younger i'm like i don't know i like i was never a big public enemy fan but i remember seeing him all over the place um and then he just kind of disappeared for a while i think he had a few reality shows i know he was in the surreal life i never watched that and he had just one show um somebody i worked with like i i don't remember what it was but i think it was like a dating show like uh like the bachelor except instead of like some handsome gentleman it's flavor flav uh i assume the bachelor is a handsome gentleman i've ever watched it um I'm trying to, i i hope i'm wrong about this but i think it was called flavor of love i i never watched it it's it, even describing it now it doesn't i'm not positive it was real but it feels i think that i think it was real um uh, I never, I never saw it. I just remember hearing a coworker talk about it a lot. Um, but yeah, he's. I'm glad he's in this game. This game needs colorful characters like Flavor Flav, um, like just like some over the top personalities, because there's just not enough of them. Like I've complained a lot about how many boring rappers there are. Uh, and while I'm again, I'm not a fan of Flavor Flav's musically speaking. Um, he's. It's just he's a good addition to the roster. It's it's nice to have him here. It's kind of weird. He's so underplayed. Like, he's not mentioned, we don't talk to him, he has no cutscenes, he's completely uninvolved except for this fight, which makes me feel like they couldn't afford to get him for anything more than just the stuff they needed to record, uh, to make him a fighter in the game. Like, he has his, his battle, just like, talk, like his stuff he says when he taunts, and uh, his winning uh, phrase, and his whatever he says about this, the, the, babbling he did at the start um but i feel like that's all they could get him to do uh which is why he's not involved in the game a little bit more like you know like snoop dogg is um not to say he would be as big a role as snoop dogg but you know when you, when you have somebody who at the time was still a pretty big name in hip-hop uh you would you would think he would be they would put him all over the place if they could hold on we need to there we go okay i think i don't think he recovered before this um yeah, okay, there we go. Alright, so we got uh, got through him pretty easy. He's not a super tough fight or anything, he's just... They, they put him here mostly because of his name recognition, I think. That's their their way of compensating from not being in the game a whole lot, is that they put him in one of these big fight situations uh, up there on par with Ludacris. Um, yeah, we unlocked him in a song called Move, and then uh, his blazing move Time's Up, which uh, obviously has to do with his big old clock around his neck. All right, and then let's just take care of Ludacris here, and we should be just about done with this stretch. And I'm glad we get to finally fight Ludacris. Other than um, other than Blaze and potentially Redman, Ludacris has been the most prolific uh, member of D-Mob's crew. Like he's the one we've 
we've talked to a lot, uh, both before and after our turn. He, we just get lots of messages from him. Uh, and, um, I don't know, I, I think we're in a different version of 7th Heaven. I want to see... Yeah, yeah, this is the one I like. So, um, 7th Heaven is not a great venue, but I like this version of it because it's so, like, pink and purple. Like, look at this lighting. Everyone just looks way more interesting in it. Um, so I'm glad we should unlock this, uh, through this fight, uh, this version. So I'm, I'm happy to have that. Um, and Ludacris, yeah, I don't know, I, I try to talk about the rappers when we fight them. Um, but you know, I've never really been able to get into Ludacris. Like... He's a really big name, um, like I know he's done lots of stuff with the Fast and the Furious franchise, and honestly, I've never thought he was a bad rapper, like I don't dislike him at all, but I've just always had a hard time really getting into any of his songs, I don't know why, I don't know if it's his personality or what is, but it's, uh, even though I think he's a fine rapper, I just have a hard time getting into him. He's kind of like Buster Rhymes in that I tend to like him a lot more when he's a guest rapper on other people's stuff. Because I've heard him pop into some other songs before, and usually when that happens, he's the best part of the song. Um, man, he's... We hit him with his, our blaze pretty quickly, but he's still really high up there in health. Um, he's gonna it's gonna take a lot to, to bring him down. Obviously, since he's one of the bigger names, he's gonna be one of the tougher fighters. That's kind of how it works. Like, how famous you are determines how tough you are. Uh, usually, except unless you're Bubba Sparks, apparently, who gets to be tough despite being <laughs> relatively unknown. Um, at least I think he is. Uh, but yeah, okay, we've actually got him down pretty low here. This is going a lot smoother than I, I thought at first. Uh, he just recovers quickly, I think is the, all we have to worry about here. But this should wear him back down into the red area, and maybe we can hit him with a strong grapple or throw him into the wall or something. Um, if he doesn't, uh, hold on. <laughs> if he doesn't heal too much here, yeah, it, it's just gonna take some perseverance. He's not countering nearly as much as, say, Scarface did. But here, this should do it. Yeah, okay. So, he actually was one of the easiest fights we've had in a while. Um, so I take back what I said earlier. Didn't didn't put up too much of a fight. Uh, but yeah, that. Um, so now we've taken the seventh heaven back uh, in all its pink glory. There's our money. I want to see. Um, Let's see, Ludacris' Sculpture. Yeah, Club DTP. I, I, for some reason, is what it's called when it's purple. I don't know what DTP stands for. Um, don't, don't trust the police, maybe? I don't, I don't know. Alright. For whatever reason, a lot of the story in this part's told through these voicemails and emails. I'm not sure why they didn't make cutscenes for these, but, uh, Ludacris wants to tell us we got lucky. You got lucky last night with your soft ass. Ain't gonna happen again. He should have talked a lot of smack. Uh, and then Blaze says he can't let us do it. Uh, we worked too hard to put this crew on the map. No way we're going to let a no good trader like you pull us apart. We're going outside the family being a heavy hitter from Baltimore. He's going to put you in the ground. Yeah. Um, so I remember this guy. And I think after this is just the top tier um, people from DMOB's crew. Yeah. At, here at Hunts Point Scrapyard we're going to be fighting uh, Tech. Um, not sure what uh, exactly the, the deal is with this guy. <laughs> He's just sort of an anomaly. Like, I think he came about because somebody in the um, in the design team was like, you know what would be cool if there was a character like the Terminator? Like, if there was a hip-hop Terminator. Um, and I, I assume that's all the thought that went into to making him. Cause I can't really make sense of him any other way than, uh, than that. Uh, like, he's definitely the most uh, military-type fighter here. Like, he's... He's, I, I think the way that he's described is usually, um, like, no wasted motion, like that type of fighter. Um, and, but they also gave him this look, like, he's got the camo pants, obviously, but then he's got this bulletproof vest. Um, which apparently didn't do him a lot of good, because he's got these bullet holes in, like, his neck and arms and stuff, too. Um, so I'm assuming that he's, like, supposed to be, like, like, some kind of invincible monstrosity. Which is why they hired him. Because uh, apparently everyone else we've been fighting lives in New York except for Tech. Um, but the other weird thing about Tech uh, is he kicks my ass here, apparently. Uh, the, the other weird thing about him is he's the only fighter, I think, to get this much like of a big treatment. But um, 
still like not be a fighter or not be a, a rapper signed to Def Jam Records in real life. Like he's not a real person. Um, if you couldn't couldn't tell. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I guess once you got, create somebody who's supposed to be the Terminator or like some your universe's equivalent of the Terminator or something like that, you have to treat him like a big deal. Which is why we have him kind of shoved in here. Is like, oh, he's some guy we brought in from out of town. Um, I guess to justify, like, because we were the top fighter in D Mob's crew, so of course we we're able to take out everybody else. But he's supposed to be a lot tougher, and and he is. He's definitely um, one of the harder fights of this stretch, uh, or at least one of the harder solo fights. So there's a fight coming up um, that's a lot tougher, I think. But. Um, we're, we're just wearing him down. He's not, like, he's not quite as, as rough as, as Crack was the first time we fought him. Um, we're a lot better prepared for him now, and really it's just a matter of perseverance. And thankfully this is a arena with a lot of potential to throw him up against walls. Um, hold on, let me... Oh, crap. I thought we could just hit him in the knees and knock him out, but apparently uh, that did not work. Um... Uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and blaze. Uh, I thought I was hoping I could knock him out while he was on the ground, but he, um, for some reason, our thing didn't work. Well, crap! Now he's he's fought back out of it. This is kind of what I'm talking about. He's just um, he is kind of like a, like a Terminator. He just absorbs damage. Um, but again, we've got plenty of damage to give out at this point, so it's not as bad as some of the characters like that we fought before. I mean, yeah, he just kind of recovers every time I get him. In, down into the red, he recovers before we can really capitalize on it. But um, I think if we can, at the, well, at the very least, if we just keep this up, eventually he won't have any green to go back into, and then we can end it any time we want, pretty much. But it's just kind of like, eventually, there we go, okay. Eventually it'll happen, we just have to be persistent with it. Um, we're a little Terminator like there with our uh, silence we've been carrying on this whole time. Uh, so yeah, we should unlock a few stuff there, as usual. Um, always nice to unlock stuff, get some more money we'll never spend. Um, yes. The Throw Dim Bows is the blazing move we got. And we also got the Hunts Point Scrapyard, which I guess we didn't have. I thought we had that one already. I guess not, or at least we didn't have this version of it, though I don't think it was that different. Okay. Doesn't look like we have any messages, um, but we do have one more fight here at Club 357. High stakes version. Uh, finally, we're gonna fight Red Man as Doc. We're gonna finish this shit tonight, little bitch. I'm gonna cut your eyes out and put them on my knees and call you Neezy. I've always remembered that voicemail. I, it's just so weird. What are you doing, man? You do this, Crow takes everything. Hey, what's wrong with you? I guess all that talk about loyalty and family, that was all bullshit, huh? I should have taken this a long time ago. No, can't help but notice that magic went in after him. But yeah, that's the real reason I kept our necklace that whole time. Um, like, I think that cutscene happens no matter what. Uh, but I like, uh, I like the continuity of me having been wearing it this whole time. Um, and I don't think the game makes you wear it, but anyway, we finally get to fight Red Man though. I'm excited for this. I think, I think he's legitimately my favorite character. I, like I was talking earlier in the episode about how, uh, Flavor Flav blings, uh, blings, brings some nice, uh, hold on. Yeah, you see, Flavor Flav bling brings this, this, uh, color to the, um, to the game as one of the more interesting characters, and I think... I think Doc is like the perfect, um, interesting character. He's just so good. Uh, I like everything about him. He's so like he says the most obtuse stuff, like the the ass licking comment he just made and the putting our eyeballs on his knees. Uh, just like it's stuff that's really graphic, but it's so like ridiculous that you can't even take it seriously. Like how do you? Can you can you really get offended by something like that? It's just too it's too silly. Um, uh, and this is this is going to be kind of a hard fight. Unlike Ludacris, Doc is a pretty a pretty good fight. Um, one of the last good uh, solo fights. Like, I think this and Snoop Dogg are the only good one on one fights left um, as far as like difficult matches go in the storyline. Uh, though 
none of them really top like the levels we get when we're fighting Ice T and Crack, just because we're just because we've caught up. Though speaking of which, this is our only our second time at this club now. I think I, when we fought Ice T in this club before, I said that it was um the only time we fought there, but I was mistaken because I'd forgotten when we fight uh, Doc here. Yeah, he's got his um he's got his blaze now. I hope uh. Uh, I hope he doesn't hit us with it. <laughs> um, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit harder to buy time here than at some of the other places, but... Yeah, I think, um, I think we're doing alright though. We just need to... Oh crap, he got us! Oh man, this is good. I wish... Oh man. I don't think we'll have a chance to get that blaze, but I want it. <laughs> that's, that's so good. Um, he just... It hits us in the nuts a whole bunch. That we need to get some of the the sillier ones like that. And, like, we've already got the spanking, but uh, I feel like our other blazing moves are kind of boring uh, by comparison. Uh, man, yeah, I'm just having a hard time keeping up with him. But we should hopefully be able to catch up here. I don't know. We'll um, we'll see. We might have to do a couple <laughs> a couple tries with with Doc here. I just gotta. Yeah, I just gotta... I don't know. Um, I'm sorry, I I know I'm trailing off here, but I'm just having a hard time keeping up, because I don't think we fought anybody this fast before. Um, or at least this fast with their attacks and, and deal this much damage with them. Uh, like, all the fast characters we fought before really don't do much damage and really don't take a lot to, to bring down. But Doc's the exception. Um, he's probably the best fast fighter that we, we fight. Oh, there we go. I got kind of lucky there. Just... Hit him with the pipe a bunch of times. Um, yeah, I, yeah, well, I'll take it, whatever. Um, but I think that's gonna have to be where we stop for now. We're getting close to the end time, and the part I was talking about earlier is coming up. So I hope you guys had fun. Um, we got the club three five seven high stakes balls to the wall, um, and I'll see you guys uh, next week. Uh, so uh, take care until then. Bye.